Hi, I'm Brian from TheEpicenter.com. I'm here today to show you a brand new product. This is called Hatsuden Nabe. It's uh, made in Japan. The name roughly translates to electricity emitting pan. This is actually a fire-powered DC generator that outputs USB power so that you can charge USB devices like cell phones. It's got a thermoelectric generator module in the bottom, a TEG, and what the TEG is able to do is take the temperature difference between the bottom, which you're going to expose to high temperature from a fire, and the temperature of water inside of the pan, and uh, it uses that temperature difference and it's able to generate electricity. So what you would do is put water in here, the heat eventually causes this water to boil. Okay, now the boiling water, you don't normally think of boiling water as being cool, but in comparison to the temperature that this bottom can see from a fire, which would be about 450 to 500 degrees C, boiling water would be at about 100 degrees C, so there's a large temperature difference, and that's what allows the module to generate electricity. So, today we're going to be hooking this up and we're going to be charging a cell phone at the same time that we're boiling water to make soup. So, stay tuned. Okay, we've got our test set up all ready to go. Today we're going to be using a Coleman propane powered camp stove as our heat source. Uh, over here is the pan, and the pan can use fire. That's the big thing about this. You can use a campfire as the heat source, but we're in the warehouse, so we're going to use propane. And then we have this uh, test setup uh, all set, ready to go. I'm going to show you what that's all about. Uh, let's go ahead and get the camp stove going. We've got a little propane happening. We've got the flame going. We're going to put our pan on here. Okay. The lid, you don't need, uh, I'm not going to have this on for demonstration purposes, but this actually keeps uh, the water from evaporating too quickly. Okay, now, over here, I've got a stopwatch, and we're going to go ahead and start that up uh, so that we can time about how long it takes for the pan to start outputting enough power. Another thing I want to make sure you know about is you should put this heat shield on here. This is going to be there to protect the pan, uh, the handle and the wiring from heat and from flame, especially if you're using this on a camp fire. Okay, now let's talk about this uh, setup down here. I'm going to switch the lens so you can see it close up, okay? Now, this box here comes out of the pan Okay, and this is the regulator charge controller. There are three LEDs. This red one is not connected to anything, okay, so just ignore that. Uh, these two LEDs, the first one comes on when the output uh, of the regulator is right around four, uh, five volts. The second one comes on when the output of the pan is at maximum. Okay, that is where you'll want to actually hook up uh, devices like this iPhone. We're going to be charging this iPhone 4, and you want to hook that up after this light comes on. This means you've got maximum power. Okay, the rest of this test setup here, we have a cable going to uh, this device, which is a meter that's going to be uh, acquiring data while we're charging the iPhone. Uh, and it also it displays the voltage. This is the output from the charge controller up here. It's also going to measure how much current is being drawn. It'll show what the wattage is. It'll also measure the peak current, the minimum voltage, uh, a bunch of other parameters that aren't important. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reset this right now so that this boots back up and starts measuring data. All right, and from that meter right now, you see that we're at about 4 volts. That's not optimum for uh, USB charging, but you see that this light is beginning to light. Okay, when this comes on full brightness, uh, the output will be at 5 volts, but you'll still want to wait until the second light comes on when you've got a high power device like this iPhone. Now, over here, you see that the iPhone is actually not connected right now, and I'm going to try to turn it on and you'll see that this is completely dead. All right, is that, there you go, okay. So you see that it's saying that the battery is extremely low. It's so low it won't even turn on. And it's got an indicator down here uh, below that battery meter that says plug it in, get some power on here. Okay, so 
We are at about uh, two minutes and this uh, first light is on and the output is uh, right at the right voltage. We're still going to wait until this second one comes on. Okay, now over here on the pan, you see that bubbles are beginning to form and we've got a good amount of heat down here. And Okay, we're at about five minutes and you see that the second light has come on and uh, we're going to go ahead and hook up the iPhone now. Now, this may be a little difficult to do one-handed, so I'll give it a try. All right, there we go. And now, you see that it's starting to draw current, and you see that the phone has actually woken up on its own. It's showing that it's charging. Do you see that? Okay, very good. We're at seven minutes. Now, I want to show you something else. Uh, we still are charging. Um, but you see that the output voltage is a little bit low. It's 4.58 volts. There are a couple of things you can do. Um, and you see that that second LED has, has gone out. So we either need a little bit more heat or this is a good time to add some water. Okay. Now, we started with about a third of the amount of water. And um, I wanted to show you this. If you add water, okay, watch what happens here to this output. All right. All of a sudden, that light, you see how bright that is? And this output has reached a maximum uh, normal kind of charging voltage. And that's because we've added water and uh, we've actually lowered the temperature of the inside. So now there's a greater temperature difference. And so the pan is outputting more power. We're at 14 minutes. Uh, the iPhone is still charging. Uh, we're drawing about 1.8 watts, about 400 uh, milliamps. And this is a good time to go ahead and make some ramen soup since we have boiling water. So I'm going to put that in there and uh, go ahead and put our little spice packet in here. Ooh, yummy. Okay, there you have it. It's powering up and it's at uh, 17 minutes. So it took 17 minutes to charge up this iPhone enough from an absolutely dead state to a point that it's actually going to power up. And there's our soup. So pretty soon we're going to have soup and we're going to be able to make a phone call. And there we have it. Okay, well, that's the pan charger in operation, charging up a real phone and a real application. And you can see now it's drawing um, about a half an amp. It's drawing about 2.3 watts. Okay, total time to get it charged up enough to function is uh, right around 18 minutes. And here you see, it's alive. It's alive. Yep. Okay, that's it. The pan charger in operation for the epicenter.com. I'm Epicenter Brian.